Actually, wait. Nice you shouldn't have mine. Nice to see you. Yeah. My wife, Karen. Of I'm course. Here. Hello. How are you? So I wanted to, to start out with last night. It's official. Trump is running for president again. Did you watch his announcement? Uh, I had a speech at the Lincoln Center here in New York City, and uh, uh, but I caught clips of it. And, uh, you know, the president has every right uh, to stand for election again. And But I really do believe, as I've traveled around this country over the last two years, that in the wake of the failed policies of the Biden administration, that the American people long to go back to the successful policies of the Trump-Pence administration. But, Jill, I have a genuine sense that uh, the American people are looking uh, for new leadership that could unite our country around our highest ideals, uh, that, that, that would reflect the respect and civility the American people show to one another every day while still advancing uh, the policies that we advanced during those years of service. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the midterms and, and the results. Um, what do you think happened? Why did Republicans do so badly? Uh, I like to say a win is a win. Uh, I would have liked to have seen a lot more Republicans elected to the House of Representatives, but I, uh, I, I celebrate um, the election of a new Republican majority, and I think the day that Nancy Pelosi hands the Speaker's gavel uh, to Speaker Kevin McCarthy will be a great day, not just for Republicans, uh, but for the country. It wasn't quite the red wave that we all had hoped for. Uh, I certainly would have liked to see us win a majority in the Senate. But my conclusion looking at the results is the candidates that were focused on the future, focused on the challenges the American people are facing today and the solutions to those challenges, did quite well. Uh, but candidates, by contrast, that were focused on the past, particularly those that were, that were trying to relitigate the last election did not do as well. And, and so I, I believe a, a message coming out of the midterm elections is that uh, the American people want change, uh, but that the Republican Party, to meet this moment, needs to be seen as the party of the future. You know, you write in your book um, about Trump's reckless words, and you say that he endangered your family who were with you at the Capitol that day and everyone who was at the Capitol that day. And so my question is, what should be the consequences for those actions? Well, I believe everyone that rioted at the Capitol needs to be held to the strictest account of the law. I said it that day, and it continues to be my position. I'll never forget uh, the simmering indignation that I felt that day, seeing those sights uh, on the cell phones as we, as we gathered in the loading dock below the Senate chamber. I couldn't help but think, not this, not here, not in America. That tragic day in January will, uh, will always be a day of uh, great sadness for me. Um, and I do believe that when I saw that tweet come across uh, that criticized me directly at a time that a riot was raging in the Capitol hallways, that uh, the President's words were reckless. Um, and they endangered my family and everyone at the Capitol building. But quite frankly, Jill, I didn't have time for it. And the president had decided to be a part of the problem. I was determined to be a part of the solution. Do you believe then that he is fit to be president again? I think that's a question for the American people. But you, do you think that man should be back in the Oval Office? I, I think we will have better choices in 2024. And I'm very confident that Republican primary voters will choose wisely. So just in two or three words, if I ask you, are you running for president in 2024? I'll keep you posted.